The iconic sandbox tree of Upper Keon became a casualty of Tropical Storm Laura on the weekend. The large tree, which is located close to the St. Mary's Parish Church and Cemetery, is over 100 years old. The tree apparently took a utility pole down with it as well. By Saturday morning, residents and members of the public utility companies, the police and fire and rescue service were present cutting the tree apart and clearing the roadway. President of the St. Christopher National Trust, Schneiber Warner, who is also a resident of Keon, spoke of fond memories of the sandbox tree. It's a geographical marker. It's a place where people waited for their friends and relatives, where people gossiped, watched women, just passed the time, played dominoes, played draft, sat and uh, as a child, I remember women would sit there um, doing crochet. Not far from that famous sandbox tree was one of the the um, few murders I recall as a child in Kaon. Often when people would come to funerals, rather than going into the cemetery, they would simply congregate on the sandbox tree to, to, to chat, to gossip to remember the loved ones who they came to pay their respects. One never looked up at it to say, well, how tall is this tree? Or what is the diameter of its branches? But I would guess it had a girth at its base of probably three feet or more, because as I said, it's been there in the lifetime of everyone who is on the island of St. Kitts today. Mr. Warner highlighted the importance of trees to the heritage and way of life of Kittitians. That's a tree that could have comfortably shaded over 100 people. And so therefore, it would represent not just the memories of the tree itself, but people would remember things in their lives, things they saw, things they spoke about, people who they would meet there on a regular basis. People who would be associated with that tree because we are in the in the um in the um in Bastia and other places, people would congregate around gas station forecourts. In the rural areas, you congregate on the trees. Mr. Warner is hoping that the tree may grow again from the remaining trunk. He noted that the only natural landmark now in Keon would be a flamboyant tree at the intersection of the Allen Main Road and the road to Upper Keon. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, on the weekend said the tropical storm warning was discontinued for St. Kitts and Nevis at 11 p.m. Friday night as the storm shifted overnight. At 5 a.m. Saturday, tropical storm Laura was located just 186 miles west to northwest of St. Kitts and Nevis. The trailing moisture of instability was following a disorganized system causing some additional showers, but the conditions were expected to improve as the day progressed. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. The St. Kitts and Nevis Labour Party would have had a difficult time winning the six election petitions it filed in court, which is why it eventually withdrew them. That's the view of former government minister Dwyer Astavan and political analyst Peter Wickham. In an exclusive interview with SK Newsline, Mr. Astavan said because of the kind of allegations in those petitions, it would have been hard for the party to get witnesses to testify in court. Gathering witnesses to do witness statements in itself would be a challenge. Our people have a way of telling you, boy, I see Mary slap Dwyer. They say, well, okay, you want to come and give evidence? She said, me, not me, me, want to get in no trouble. So people will see, but they will not come to court to give evidence. So in a culture like that, particularly now to, to be asked to give evidence for a candidate who has lost against a newly elected government, heightens the fear and the hesitancy in the individual and renders it more difficult. And I believe that that more than anything else was seen by the legal team as a challenge and not able to get sufficient evidence in place to make their case. And if my perception of it is correct, then I think they did the right thing 
to abort the cases. Um, were I in their shoes, I might have considered doing a challenge in one, maybe two constituencies at the most. Political analyst Peter Wickham had a slightly different view on the matter. In an interview on SK Newsline's sister radio station, Voice of the Caribbean Radio, he said the petitions were far-fetched and would not have succeeded in court. He was, however, surprised that the party withdrew the petitions. Uh, the, the more successful petition, or the most successful petition of recent times, which was the one that went forward in Nevis, um, had a bit more substance to it than this one. And, and this one didn't seem particularly strong, but I was not expecting it to be withdrawn because I figured it would have gone forward, it would have been fought, uh, and then it would have given the opposition the opportunity to say, look, we, we, we carried this argument to its logical conclusion and we lost it, but we're still convinced that there was something in it. The, the idea of unilateral withdrawal, however, makes it difficult to argue that you have fought it to the end. Uh, and I think even in terms of how it was withdrawn, and I don't know if we're going to get to that later in the conversation, it, it seemed a bit unusual to me because the announcement that we saw in the press uh, basically said that the opposite, the government exploited some errors and, and forced them to withdraw the matter. Uh, and then we subsequently heard, certainly from Dr. Douglas in his, his piece that he did with you, that the matter was unilaterally withdrawn because there were some, some mistakes that were made regarding the filing. Uh, and it appeared as though it was more unilateral than had, had been previously suggested by the Labour Party um, news machine. So th th it does create some confusion. To me, if you have a strong case, you don't, you don't make mistakes like that. So why then did the Labour Party eventually withdrew the six election petitions? On July 31st, the day the withdrawal was announced, the party in a statement on its Facebook page said it had been prevented from pursuing the matter on a simple legal technicality. Opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas in an interview with SK Newsline explained. Council has advised and we as clients have accepted the notice of withdrawal because of some errors we understand that were made pertaining to the notification of relevant court officials regarding the payment of the security that is usually expected to be paid in cases of this kind. Mr. Wickham, however, suspects a different reason for the withdrawal of the petitions. That they felt that fighting the petitions and failing in that regard would have exposed them even more. Um, the courts, certainly if you look at what the courts have been, the position they've been taking in Guyana, is that they, they seem to be getting to the stage where they're looking to impose some fairly hefty fees and costs in situations where uh, matters which are frivolous are, are sent to the courts. Now, I don't know whether this would have been a concern for the for the Labour Party, whether they were concerned about the costs that they would have been facing had the government defended this and then they were faced with, with costs that they had to deal with. Um, I don't know whether that was a factor. I would be inclined to think that it could not have been an issue of money. So there has to be some other strategic reason. And honestly, I think in, in, in the absence of anything coming from them directly, we, we have to guess. The Labour Party said the six election petitions provided substantive evidence based on eyewitness accounts and reports from its electoral agents that uncovered widespread irregularities in the voting process. Dr. Douglas has said, however, that the withdrawal of the petitions is by no means a concession of the election results, which saw the Team Unity Coalition winning nine of the 11 seats in the National Assembly. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. It's not just iced tea and it's not cold tea. But who said we couldn't be in the middle? We are Mother Becky Quenchers, a herbal iced tea. It's a different and innovative take on using traditional herbs for tea. It's a home-brewed blend of natural organic herbs and spices, ready to drink at any time. We've turned ingredients you've used many times into something crisp, thirst quenching, and did we mention taste awesome? Drinking tea just got better. Mother, Mother Becky, Becky Tea. tea. 
having stressful times, you need relief. A way to release your stress and care for your health. You need Serenity. Yes, Serenity Mobile Spa, where we come to your home and offer the very best in massage and spa treatment. Your health is our priority as we practice the highest hygiene procedures before, during, and after your treatment. Choose from massages to meet your physical needs, scrubs, facials, waxing, and much more. We also provide our customers a complimentary serving of refreshing local coconut water with each massage. During these restricted times, we urge our customers to stay healthy. We will come to you. Call us at 7620157 or 7608899. Find us on Facebook, Serenity Mobile Spa Sinke, or email us at Serenity Mobile Spa 869 at gmail.com. Serenity Mobile Spa. Auto Plus Car Wash, located on the Collins Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Bring your car to Auto Plus Car Wash to remove water stains, wiper marks, get your doors, roof panel cleaned, seat floor mats, buffing, headlights, and engine wash. You get quality service at the best price at Auto Plus Car Wash. They really care for your car. Call 765-5140 or visit them on the Collins Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Auto Plus Car Wash, where the service is number one. Tourism officials on St. Kitts are keeping close contact with the cruise industry as cruise lines attempt to restart cruising in a safe manner. Hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic, some cruise lines have been forced to sell ships as well as to take ships out of commission and direct to the scrapyard. There has been some cruising in the Mediterranean, but Caribbean cruising is unlikely to restart until 2021 as many COVID-19 protocols need to be implemented for a revamped cruise industry. Meanwhile, tourism officials on Sinkis are keeping in contact with the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association and its member cruise lines. We've been in constant dialogue with the FCC in terms of the opening up of the, the cruise industry, but obviously it's a fluid situation. I think the CDC sent out a no say date October 31, I think it is, so we know nothing is going to happen by that time. And so we're in a fluid situation and we, we are monitoring it very, very carefully and in constant dialogue with them. Um, if I were to take an educated guess, I don't see the industry really taking off until sometime next year, maybe the first quarter. That's my guess, my opinion, so don't hold me to that. Um, but that's just how it appears to be going at the moment. New exchanges have to occur on cruise ships to enhance social distancing at restaurants and bars, other onboard leisure activities, as well as enhancements to onboard payment systems. Cruise lines must get the protocols right in order to avoid a COVID-19 outbreak on cruise ships. Glenn Bart, SKN Newsline. The Antioch Baptist Church recently hosted a two-day conference for the personal development of young men on St. Kitts. Pastor of the Antioch Baptist Church, Lincoln Connor, explains the concept of the conference and the intended objectives. We are conducting what we consider turnaround agenda young men's conference and the turnaround agenda is an auxiliary of the Antioch Baptist Church. We, uh, through the turnaround agenda, we seek to uh, engage in youth rehabilitation, uh, poverty alleviation, and uh, assisting individuals through benevolence. And so the turnaround agenda uh, ministry is one that is comprehensive and seeks to target youth in particular our young men our conference is uh, part of that engagement and it is uh, uh, taking place over the period august the 18th and the 19th we have been engaged in a number of sessions under the theme don't fear the future but shape it so we've invited uh, quite a number of uh, young professionals to address the young men between the ages of 12 and 19 and we had individuals like Dr. Marcus Natter, who spoke directly on the subject, Don't Fear the Future, Shape It, uh, Curtis Martin, who did uh, a Black Boys Framework for Success, and both of those sessions were plenaries. Then we had breakout sessions where we had uh, people like Azim Bailey, he spoke on life and music, uh, Quinn Martin, 
Money Matters and Critical Life Issues, and Delwyn Delaney, the successful student athlete. Over the two-day period, we have been able to engage over 85 young men, and uh, it has been quite an interesting and uh, transformative experience. This is the first time the event is being held, and Pastor Connor promises that it will become an annual event. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Entrepreneur Mervan Thompson recently launched an online events listing service called Kong Shell. The website and app-based service will cover events and information related to a wide range of interests such as entertainment, fitness, education, notices, sports, virtual events, and conferences. According to Mrs. Thompson, Kong Shell will serve as a one-stop source for information, activities, and events taking place on St. Kitts and Nevis. Speaking with SK Newsline, Thompson provided background on the new online service she's building out. I think one of the main points of Conkshell, one of the mainstays, is the fact that it has everything listed there. So we know there are a few events tomorrow. Some persons might forget uh, particular details for one particular event. The, all the details are listed in the app. You can find what's happening here. And if it's not there, it's probably not happening. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you mentioned um, it's for anyone, people, people overseas, visitors, that kind of thing. So I'm a visitor. Um, I'm coming in. What do I look for? How do I get to your site? How do I get to your <laughs> Very interesting question you ask. And I guess it's coincidental. Because we have had meetings with uh, the different tourism agencies actually. We've had a meeting with the Tourism <coughs> Authority, they totally loved it. We've had uh, meetings with the SDC, the Sustainable Development Council. We've also met with the airport staff, SCASPA, we're in the process of that, of finding out what the process is to let arriving visitors know about the app. So in short time, we would have something posted at the airport. We would reach out to taxi operators, tour operators, those persons who are in direct contact with not just international tourists, but regional tourists as well. They, it might be the first time that they are coming to St. Kitts and Nevis, or it, would be, it could be that they have family here because it's a small world. So they could have family here they could download the app. It's available across the Caribbean. It's available in the U.S., in, the, in Canada, in the U.K. And there's the website, www.conkshellevents.com. So any person can access information there. However, the app is where you can go to get reminders, as well as there's a feature that was programmed into it to allow broadcasts for national emergencies. We have spoken to NEMA, so we are in the process of trying to meet with them if the authorities would allow. And so the passage of the Sahara dust the other day, the passage of tropical, uh, well, cyclone uh, Isaiah's, yes, the, the information, it would be posted there. Many persons who download the app they would be able to receive whatever blast message or national emergent message that is being sent to anybody who has the app, that is. Even if they are in the U.S. and they haven't deleted it from their phone as yet, they would also get the message. So it's anyone who has the app, they would, have the, the, they would get the no, be notified of what the, the, the authorities are trying to let the public know. The apps can be downloaded to your phone via Google Play for Android phones or from the App Store for persons with iPhones. Glenn Bart, SKN Newsline. Graphics 
are dedicated to providing quality products and service to our customers. Our team takes pride in the craftsmanship and is passionate about its work. Every job, large or small, is important. Most of our customers come to us through referrals. That's because our number one priority is service. We serve a wide variety of customers, such as restaurants, retail stores, manufacturers, trucking companies, and many more. Our capabilities include design, production, and installation. How can we help? We are located at Bird Rock at the Woods Wright Compound. Call us at 869-763-1511 or 784-491-7599. Multigraphics. KVK Enterprises at Boyd's Housing Development, Trinity Parish, St. Kitts. For all your t-shirt printing, banners and signs, promotional products, shipping, motivational speeches, computer classes, agro-processing, art and craft, and desktop publishing. Come to KVK Enterprises at Boyd's Housing Development, Trinity, St. Kitts. Telephone 661-0118 or 765-7270. Email drkhrystus at kvklives.com or visit www.kvklives.com KVK Enterprises <laughs>